Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's another wonderful Wednesday morning and we hope that you woke up bright and early and uh, also very healthy to do what you need to do. Uh, on this uh, on the show today, we are going to be looking at tech innovations and today's businesses. We also are going to be looking at NNPCL as they quit as middleman in Dangote refinery petrol purchase. We also are going to have the top trending issues uh, that we will discuss on the show this morning. And uh, right after that, we'll be looking at the papers to see what headlines made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. Once again, good morning and welcome to the program. Let's take a short break and return in a minute. Our quote for the day is from Tom Stoppard, a British playwright and screenwriter. And he says, a healthy attitude is contagious, but don't wait to catch it from others. Be a carrier. A healthy attitude is contagious, but don't wait to catch it from others. Be a carrier. Yes, you should be the trailblazer. You should be the reason people want to flock around you. You should be the, the reason that people go up with uh, good attitudes. You should be the reason that people have peace of mind. You should not wait for someone else to be that person. You can be that person uh, in your group. Let, you, let your attitude speak for you. Let your attitude be the positive one. Even if everybody else's attitude is not that positive, let be the positive one that will, be, will rub off on others. Don't wait until you see someone with a good attitude and say, okay, let this person be the one to change me while I am with them. Be that person that people will want to be around you and be changed for the better. A wonderful quote there this morning. And we will hope that you are going to borrow a leaf from that and just do what is in that quote. We move straight to our top trending issues. The first one is that Lagos won't obey court orders stopping arrest and fines by VIO. That's according to the commissioner. Now, the Lagos state government clarified that a federal high court ruling in Abuja, which bars the vehicle inspection service VIO from stopping vehicles or imposing fines, does not apply to Lagos. The ruling delivered by Justice Evelyn Maha applies only to Abuja due to the absence of specific laws empowering the VIO there. Lagos operates under the Transport Sector Reform Law of 2018, which grants VIO authority in the state, making the court's decision irrelevant in Lagos. I really don't know what to say about this. Uh, Lagos has its own laws. The federal government has its own laws and all that. The VIO, is it a federal or state um, establishment if it is a federal establishment why will it work why will one law work in one locality and not work in the other uh, because Lagos state has decided otherwise what was the reason uh, why the vio was even stopped in abuja if it is only in abuja uh, from doing what they were doing are those same things that they were doing in abuja not being done in Lagos state well, there are so many questions around that, but uh, there also might be so many legal issues around that. But uh, let's just hope that this is not to say that Lagos State is uh, operating differently from the rest of Nigeria, because no matter what it is, it still belongs to Nigeria. And so if there's a ruling somewhere, uh, I'm sure in the legal world, that is what they use. They use uh, the precedents to, to do whatever they're going to do, to deliver judgments and all that. They will say in the case between this and that, even though it didn't happen in that state or it didn't happen um, that in that locality that the judgment is being given, but it is used as a reference point to pass judgments. So Lagos State has said that there are laws, relevant laws in Lagos State that, uh, that empower VIO, that's the Vehicle Inspection Office, uh, to do what they are doing. But I don't know if a state government, if VIO is a, a federal establishment and if the state government has that uh, power to do what they, they did for the VIO, I, I don't know. So I'm not, I'm not for or against, but I do hope that uh, they explored all legal issues, they explored all uh, possible issues, and then they made this pronouncement. So if you are clapping for the federal government or clapping for the uh, ruling, uh, that the VIO cannot operate in, in some way. Here in Lagos, it is not like that. That is what this tells you. Until otherwise stated, 
as they say in WAIC or any other exams, until it's otherwise stated, unless otherwise stated in Lagos State, the VIO will still carry out the functions that they, are, they have been carrying out. And uh, I'm very sure this is not to say that all the things that some people are against uh, that the VIO may be doing, uh, they, they, they can continue to do them because we even know that there are rules that guide the police when they are standing on the road. There are rules that guide the VIO, the rules that guide the FRSC uh, and all of those establishments. Uh, but if they are going beyond that, that is not what Lagos State Government is supporting. If they are going according to the laws, the Lagos State laws that empower them to do certain things, then they are correct. If they are going against those laws, then uh, you fight them how you can fight them. I'm, I'm not saying be, I'm not saying fisticuffs like uh, we saw a video uh, yesterday or so where uh, the military beat up the Kai officials in Lagos. That's not what we're talking about. But you, you take the legal steps that you should take to make sure uh, that these people who are stepping uh, away from the laws are brought to book. Well, 26 states attracted zero foreign investment in one year. That's the report that we got. Nigeria's capital importation rose to 2.60 billion in the second quarter of 2024, a 152.81% increase from 1.03 billion in the second quarter of 2023. Lagos attracted the most foreign investment with $1.37 billion, that is 52.52%, followed by Abuja with $1.24 billion, that is 47.48%. 26 states, that is out of uh, 36 states, recorded zero foreign investment from second quarter of 2020 through 2023 to 2024. Some of these states include Oyo, Zamfara, Bauchi, Bayelsa, Delta, Enugu, and Kanu, among others. So no direct foreign investment, no foreign investment, that, that's what the story is saying. 26 states, that is only 10 states, uh, were able to uh, attract foreign investment into their states. And some people would say that maybe it is because the, the governors themselves are are not putting on their thinking caps to make sure that they attract investments into their states. Uh, maybe these states are falling under uh, areas where there is insecurity, but there must be some reasons why this is happening. But uh, all in all, a lot of people have argued that going cap in hand every month to share money in Abuja is making so many states to be lazy. And they don't want to be innovative, they don't want to be creative, and they are not able to attract what should be attracted to their states because they know that whether they work or not, at the end of the month, they will go and earn this, the national salary as it is because every state goes there and uh, money is shared to them. So they don't need to uh, put on their thinking cap. That is too much work for them to do. So I think this should be something. There should be uh, something that will put, be put in place to um, Sure that um, all the states are innovative, all the states are creative enough, all the states are making sure that they are attractive enough for investors to come in, whether local or foreign, to come in and do businesses in their states for them to move their IGR up. Lagos can do it, Abuja can do it. Uh, I know that Lagos was the, the national capital. Um, uh, Abuja was the national capital also, but at some point Calabar was the capital as well. So uh, let's not even begin to argue about w why one state is doing what they're doing and the other is not doing. So everybody should be involved. Everybody should be thinking uh, outside the box. In fact, think like there is no box. That's what a lot of people are now saying. No need of thinking outside the box as if there was a box. Think like there was no box. Be able to explore things uh, and uh, yeah, things that will make your state attractive enough for people to come in and invest. But as we say this, like I said in, earlier on, it is also a possibility that a lot of these states fall under where there is insecurity and it will be difficult to attract investment, especially from foreign bodies to come into states like that, that are volatile, states that are insecure, states that um, you would think that doing business there will be a very, very dangerous thing for you. So it is both the fault, it may both be the fault of the state governments and also the federal government uh, because of some other issues. But whatever it is, there's no excuse. At least some 
some form of investment should come from outside or the potential investment. One year is a long time uh, for nothing to happen. But whatever it is, we hope that from 2024, uh, which has not ended, we are, we are just a few days into the, the last quarter of this year. A lot of things can still happen in this last quarter uh, before we get to the end of the year. So let's hope that things will look up and things will improve for these states and its people. Okay, we will take the last one. Fubara disregard for ju court judgment invitation to anarchy. That's according to Wike. Nyesom Wike, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, accused River State Governor Siminalaye Fubara of defying a court ruling, warning it could lead to anarchy. Wike emphasized the importance of obeying court judgments to prevent chaos and lawlessness, criticizing Fubara for publicly stating his refusal to comply with the ruling. The tension in River State escalated after the Inspector General of Police ordered the unsealing of local government secretariats, sparking unrest and violence. Despite the withdrawal of major political parties and the police from the local government elections, Fubara proceeded with the election, resulting in violence, explosions and uh, attacks on council secretariats. Okay, so... Um, what do I do? Without, I, I don't know how to say this without f sounding like I am trying to blame one party or the other. Uh, according to the words of Wiki, uh, if you do not obey court orders, you are inviting anarchy. Yes, let me extend that. If you do not obey the law, then you are inviting anarchy. Whether it is a pronouncement from the court or it is a provision of the Constitution, if you do not obey it, then you are inviting anarchy. And that means that uh, you don't need to wait for the court to make a pronouncement before you can do something. If it is not constitutional for you to do some things, then don't do it. And that means that a lot of politicians, especially those who have been governors and are still governors, are, are guilty of this. There are so many court rulings that have been uh, jettisoned, they have been abandoned by those who should obey them uh, because they are in the corridors of power and nothing happens in Nigeria. That's why every time we've always been talking about the need to be, uh, the need for, the, for consequences for any bad behavior, there should be consequences, no, consequences, no matter uh, who you are or what you are, there should be consequences. Yes, we know that there is immunity for um, for governors, you can't, they cannot be prosecuted while they are on seat and all that. But we've seen even governors who have handed over and instead of being prosecuted, they are getting juicy appointments, they are getting, they are getting their way, they are getting their connections, they are oiling their, their structures as it were. And that is why Nigeria is where we are. If it happens to you, the other party is wrong. If you are the one doing it, you are right and the other person is wrong. That is what is happening. So if the laws must be obeyed, Wiki obey the law. Fubara obey the law. All the other governors obey the law. All the political uh, bigwigs obey the law. No matter who you are, you need to obey the law. Otherwise, we will continue in this uh, trajectory and we don't know where we're even going. It's like, you know, there is al already anarchy where anybody can do what they like. Uh, the Constitution provides for a particular thing. You do what you like. The Constitution says A, you say B, uh, because B favors you. Uh, you, you leave A, uh, whether it is constitutional or not. We don't, do not even know whether it is court pronouncement that we should be looking, about, uh, looking to. Uh, if the court pronounces a thing, it is because the Constitution has spelled that thing out and you have contravened that law, that provision in the Constitution, and that is why the court has made a pronouncement, which means anybody who contravenes any of these laws, no matter whether it is taken to court or not, then you are guilty. We shouldn't be doing this. So we are making Nigeria a, a banana republic, as, as we, we like to say in Nigeria. It's like it, it's a banana republic. If you are in power, you do what you like. Maybe Fubara is doing this because he's in power. And maybe he borrowed a leave from someone else who was once in power. You see. So, like I said, this is not trading blame, but this is saying that so many people are guilty, especially those people who have tasted or are still in power. 
and they've been doing all sorts of things and they are going scot-free. Nobody holds them accountable. If they take it to court, it could drag till they die. And then the case just dies like that. Or they, after two or three administrations, everybody forgets about it and we start to blame uh, the people who are non-existent and all that. So everybody should be made to face the rot of the law. If Fubara is wrong, those people who are going to court, uh, let the courts decide and make sure that uh, if it is cancellation of, of the election, for instance, this is what is bringing all this, then they cancel it and uh, whatever needs to be done should be done. And then when he hands over uh, as governor in 2027 or any other time that he's going to hand over, then the law takes its course and uh, what needs to be done should be done. If also the Federal Capital Territory Minister is doing some things that are against the Constitution, then uh, let's look at that and also make sure that he faces the music. He, at this point, doesn't even have immunity, so anything, uh, he can be prosecuted. But the unfortunate thing is that in Nigeria, if you're politically strong, and that means you have connections everywhere, uh, then it means that you cannot be prosecuted because you must always be shielded. You'll be shielded by people who are your friends, uh, people who are, who, if you go in for it, you might drag them down as well. They don't want that to happen and all that. So it's a complicated issue. All in all, we're looking forward to a better Nigeria where the law will take its course, where people will face the consequences of bad behavior and be rewarded accordingly for good behavior. Uh, that is the country we're looking forward to a country where people will be accountable, a country where people will be thinking of the masses rather than self, a country where everybody will be comfortable knowing or, and, and proud that you are a Nigerian. And that country is possible and it starts with you and I. If I cannot make the laws, let me cry out when a bad law is made so that it can be repealed or it can be worked on and we have a better law. After all, it is national interest that should supersede every other interest. That is why they say uh, it's uh, a matter of interest. And a matter of interest in Nigeria has been, has been twisted to be personal interest. What is obtainable in other climes is that we are looking for a national interest, but the approaches to this national interest might differ. One might take one approach, the other person might take another one. And when they're campaigning, this is what they tell the people. This is the road I want to take to achieve this. And the other person is telling you, this is the road I want to take to achieve that. And when the people are comfortable with in any of those roads, they follow these people and vote for them. It doesn't happen like that in Nigeria. Everybody just goes there to one place. Maybe they have a conference and copy the constitution and change the words and then come and give to us. And when they get into office, they do what they like. But the bone of contention is not oh, what they promise us and what they fail to do. The bone of contention right now is uh, who is breaking the law and why is he or she not facing the consequences. Wike has said it very, very aptly that if you do not obey the court rulings, and I just say, if you do not obey the law, then you are inviting anarchy. So whoever is guilty, take a step backwards and do the right thing. We don't want to see what we're seeing in River State. We hope that uh, there will be a river that is peaceful and we know what the consequences will be according to what the governor said that if it continues like this, maybe the output of oil from that state will be affected and which is true. Uh, it's not a threat. That is very, very true. Uh, but uh, we don't care who uh, is going to benefit if there is peace or not peace. Or we just want peace in River State. Whether it is going to benefit Wike or it's going to benefit Fubara or it's going to benefit whoever, we want peace in River State that will benefit the people. That is all it is. So let laws be respected by both the FCT minister and the governor of River State so that we can have peace in that state. Okay, that will be all for the top trending issues. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us. <music>